Neuralink and safety is certainly a hot topic. Implanting something in your brain is never an easy task. But what if you get an implant and then it breaks apart? Today we talk about this scary possibility. So imagine it's 2028, you just got your new shiny Neuralink implant. Scars are a little itchy, but the brain surgery was 100% successful. The doctor, however, was stern. Be careful and no contact sports. But you decide to go play anyway some football with your friends. It's just a game, you think, how bad can it be? But during the game you fall hard on your head and you start feeling a bit weird. So what happens next? What happens if a brain implant has a hardware failure to use some big science words? Because concussions are already dangerous, but certainly a brain implant would not improve things, right? Now this kind of accident is very serious, is a very serious issue when it comes to implants in general. Because implanting something in our body is of course a source of stress, after all we're implanting something that is foreign to our bodies. And this can have obvious implications, for example, doctors already suggest patients with implanted pacemakers to avoid contact sports like football. In a pacemaker, electrodes are in fact implanted in the heart and they stimulate the heart with electrical impulses. It is known that injuries might cause what is called dislodgement of the wires. That is, the accident moves around the tiny wires that are implanted in the heart of the patient. Ouch! Invasive brain implants are no different. Now, talking about Neuralink specifically, at the moment we don't know how the system will be designed from a hardware perspective. This hardware aspect of the brain computer interface has not been discussed yet, and for the moment we've seen the implant just in animals. But don't worry, because scientists have in fact wondered about this kind of issue. Existing brain computer interfaces, let's say the Neuralink ancestors, use in fact systems like screws to stay in place. An example is the Utah Ray. A Utah Ray is a very consolidated brain computer interface. It has been used for years. It uses bone screws a few millimeters long to stay in place, and these bone screws are implanted in the skull. Now, bone screws, of course, grant stability and grant the fact that the interface can stay in place, but to add to this, bones can in fact grow around screws and implants in general, which is a phenomenon known as osseointegration. integration. And it is similar to how trees grow around foreign objects, which helps in increasing the stability of the implant, because you get now a bone plus implant system. But still, a trauma like a blow to the head might cause the dislodgement of these tiny wires with potential issues for the brain tissues. Now, if dislodgement sounds like a too cold technical term, hear me out. Let's talk about deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation is a procedure where electrodes are implanted deep in the brain to stimulate it. Its principles are similar to the ones adopted by brain-computer interfaces like for Neuralink or Paradromics or for the Utah Ray. Basically, you stimulate the brain with electrical impulses. But in the case of deep brain stimulation, the interface is centimeters deep in the brain, while for the Utah Ray or for the Neuralink, the interfaces are only millimeters deep in the brain, specifically where located on the brain surface, the cortex. Deep brain stimulation is used to treat seizures or tremors like for Parkinson's disease. And also for this kind of brain-computer interface, hardware failures of the wires have been reported in studies. And again, this kind of hardware failures might be caused by trauma, might be caused by physical accidents. And they could trigger consequences like hemorrhage, for example, which is of course a scary possibility, but still, severe complications were actually rare, according to the scientists. And in fact, with some surgical revision of a brain-computer interface and of the implant in general, patients were mostly fine. So the Neuralink dream is not at all dead at the moment, because people have been living with this kind of brain implants for years, so I'm talking about Utah Ray or deep brain stimulation, they've been living with this kind of implants for years. And the same goes for other kind of implants like the pacemakers, which are being used by millions of people worldwide as of today. But certainly we will have to be careful, and not just for the engineers and the neurosurgeons at companies like Neuralink, but we also, we the citizens, we the people that are, might be using this kind of interface in the future, we also have to be very careful. So let me know your opinion about this in the comments, and if you are interested in this kind of videos, consider subscribing to my channel. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.